Jen! Heal the crystal. Kara! Ah! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks of classic fantasy films we feel deserve a bit more love. Sweet is the wind that blows me to you. Number 20. Dragonheart. While the golden era of fantasy films could arguably be the 1960s, 70s, or 80s, the 1990s weren't exactly bereft of fantasy fare. It's Sean Connery's work as the voice of Draco the Dragon that's perhaps best remembered in 1996's Dragonheart. Perhaps less pleasurable and more costly than you think. Yet the film also does a great job at both celebrating and commenting upon classic fantasy tropes. This is a world similar to the dying days of the Old West, where dragons are becoming extinct and their symbolic meaning is in the transitional period of becoming legend. I hold you to your bow, knight! There's a pleasant amount of pathos here as a result, making Dragonheart recommended viewing for fans who felt fantasy films might have peaked in the 80s. Aside from your misery, what's to lose? My soul. Number 19. Lady Hawk. The landscape of 1980s fantasy films is littered with quality gems, yet Lady Hawk still stands out as a somewhat idiosyncratic entry. Lord, I will never pick another pocket again as long as I live, I swear it. The 1985 film has a number of things going for it, including quality casting in the form of Matthew Broderick, Rutger Hauer, and Michelle Pfeiffer. Additionally, Andrew Powell's score sounds inspired and unique today. Despite being critically scorned during the film's initial release, I must kill a man. Tell me. Does this walking corpse have a name? His Grace. Lady Hawk feels like a fantasy movie out of time thanks to Powell's blending of synthesized progressive rock and traditionally rousing orchestral music. This, combined with the film's wonderful production design and solid cinematography, practically demands a positive reappraisal in the modern day. Damn you. Damn you to hell. Number 18. Krull. Viewers of a certain age will likely possess fond memories of watching Krull back in the mid-80s, probably on home video or during any of its cable airings. Would you follow a king to the Black Fortress? Uh, now I know you're a lunatic. I wouldn't follow my own father to the Black Fortress. The film was a blend of science fiction and fantasy tropes, and also possessed one of the coolest weapons ever committed to a fantasy film, the glaive. The production design of Kroll gave it an expansive, lived-in feel, while the cast of Lizette Anthony, Freddie Jones, and Kenneth Marshall all feel game to deliver the goods. Fantasy was a big deal in the aftermath of 1982's Conan the Barbarian, and Kroll certainly fits snugly within this archetype. Number 17. Solomon Kane. Writer Robert E. Howard has been lauded over the years for his creation of Conan the Cimmerian. Yet, the sword and sorcery hero isn't the only Howard character to receive the big screen treatment. James Purefoy did a wonderful job at depicting Howard's dour Puritan hero Solomon Kane on film. Been a long time since anybody said that about me. The adaptation presents a dark and dangerous world of evil, and Kane feels like the perfect choice to combat this infestation at every turn. And I need your light to help me find my way. <laughs> The violence here feels palpable, as if it can occur at any moment, and the resulting action is executed with visceral weight and visual flair. Solomon Kane may just be the best late 2000s fantasy movie you've never seen. My god, only you can help me now. Number 16. Conan the Destroyer Opinions continue to be largely split over 1984's Conan the Destroyer, even decades after its initial release. You owe allegiance to no one, is that not so? It is, and it always will be. This is due primarily to the film's comparably lighter tone and tamer violence, at least compared to its 1982 predecessor. The studio and producers thought the changes would increase the money-making potential of the sequel. But there's still a lot to like about the film today, too. From Basil Polidorus's magnificent score to Grace Jones's over-the-top performance as Zula. Arnold Schwarzenegger, in the meantime, still shines as Conan, and the film more than deserves the goods in terms of exciting fantasy action. Number 15. Lord of the Rings. 
A titan of the animation industry, Ralph Bakshi has a cornucopia of transgressive classics to his name. His adaptation of The Lord of the Rings, however, remains a crowning achievement for a man with a truly enviable resume. One ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness find them. This is despite the fact that this adaptation sizes down J.R.R. Tolkien's original source material and essentially stops at Helm's Deep. What Bakshi's Lord of the Rings does, however, is combine revolutionary rotoscoping effects with storytelling that doesn't dilute the scale at hand. By all the Shire, you shall have neither the ring nor me. If the Rankin Bass Tolkien adaptations are perfect for younger kids, then Bakshi's The Lord of the Rings is a welcome addition for both adults and children to explore Middle Earth. Oh, Sam. Samwise Gamgee, my dearest hobbit. Friend of friends. Number 14. The Beastmaster Conan the Barbarian wasn't the only would-be fantasy classic released in 1982. Director Don Coscarelli was hot on the heels of his 1979 film Phantasm when production began on what would become The Beastmaster. Friend, who are you? I'm Dar. Coscarelli's film would go on to become a seemingly omnipresent feature during the early days of HBO. It starred Mark Singer as the titular Animal Whispering Hero. The film possesses a left-of-center feel that seems to permeate all of Coscarelli's work, from the costume designs and special effects to the wonderful animal actors. And now I have strength. Your name is Ru. Co-stars John Amos, Rip Torn, and Tanya Roberts also bring some star power to the material, burning the Beastmaster into the memories of everyone who watched this epic on a loop growing up. We will fight. Number 13. Excalibur Different audiences might desire different things from their fantasy films. Sometimes we're in the mood for some lighthearted fun, other times we want a movie to make us think. John Borman's Excalibur is one of those hard fantasy films that doesn't hold its audience's hand for a moment. Your sword was stolen, Kay! But here's Excalibur! Instead, the filmmaker's notable independent streak comes to a head with a film that adapts the Arthurian legend in a unique and unrivaled manner. Excalibur isn't a pretty version of King Arthur. Instead, this is a world of treachery, subterfuge, and violence, where nothing is quite as it seems. The production design captures true hardship and misery of living under difficult conditions, yet Excalibur remains a satisfying joy to watch. If only you could see me. Wield Excalibur. Number 12. Dragon Slayer There have been a lot of cinematic representations of dragons over the years, but perhaps none of them have equaled the achievement of Dragon Slayer from 1981. The special effects from the George Lucas-founded Industrial Light and Magic have held up remarkably well. The creature, Veramax Pejorative, has even been referenced as an influence on Guillermo del Toro and George R. R. Martin. Be thou consumed by the fires that Dragon Slayer isn't just about the monster, however, since the performances of Peter McNichol, Caitlin Clark, and Ralph Richardson feel just as essential to the film's success. Don't think for a second that Dragon Slayer is just an 80s movie. This could be one of the truly great fantasy movies of all time, full stop. Number 11. The Fountain there is a lot going on with this 2006 film from director Darren Aronofsky. The Fountain inserts a lot of moving parts within its narrative, from expansive fantasy tropes to elements of romance, drama, and science fiction. Will you deliver Spain from bondage? Upon my honor and my life. The Fountain utilizes all of this to discuss themes of destiny and love throughout the ages. Hugh Jackman and Rachel Weisz work wonders together and The Fountain highlights their chemistry and natural talents as actors. I've been losing sensitivity to hot and cold. Why didn't you tell me? Because I feel different inside. Meanwhile, the cinematography is gorgeous, the score evocative, and Aronofsky's direction feels measured and secure. The Fountain deserves to be seen. Thank you, Lord! We are here! Number 10. Troll Hunter. World mythology is a fascinating subject, and there's a bevy of historical legends just begging for a proper fantasy adaptation. Troll Hunter from 2010 did a great job at updating Norwegian folklore for a modern audience. 
The film added a dollop of traditional horror and some found footage cinematography, making the events of the film feel vital and nerve-wracking. <laughs> The CGI-generated trolls honestly look pretty great, and the film as a whole balances fantasy film tradition with a clever script and engaging characters. Troll Hunter is an all-around win. Definitely don't miss this one. Number 9. The Gate The worlds of science fiction, fantasy, and horror have long been intertwined. How else could you categorize the genre film centerpiece from 1987, The Gate? Smells like something died in there. Director Tibor Tokac and screenwriter Michael Nankin helped create a world that served as an entry point for generations of kids seeking to dip their toes into more adult fare. <coughs> the Gate gives the viewers fantastical creatures, a legitimately creepy occult atmosphere, and likable protagonists anchored by a young Stephen Dorff. The direction keeps things moving along at a brisk pace, and the special effects still capture our imaginations to this day. No! Come back here! Take me Number 8. The Witches It's dizzying to think of all the creativity involved in getting this film off the ground. For starters, The Witches is based on a novel by Ruald Dahl. You are in for a treat. Elsewhere, the mighty team of Jim Henson brought the groundbreaking special effects work to life. Finally, Nicholas Rogue, known for his cryptic, stylized films including Don't Look Now, Performance, and The Man Who Fell to Earth, joined as director. Your disgrace! All of these moving parts combine to make the witches feel less like a fairy tale and more like a cautionary one, with a dark atmosphere and some mature themes. Number 7. The Adventures of Baron Munchausen Don't let the fact that this Terry Gilliam film was a massive box office bomb deter you. The Adventures of Baron Munchausen is truly one of a kind. Humbug, your majesty! Then again, isn't just about every film from the Maverick director one of a kind. The former Monty Python member possesses an incalculable imagination and an unfettered approach to cinema and the world. As a result, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen does just what it says on the tin. It brings the titular Baron's tall tales to the silver screen. I quite understand. That includes fantastical creatures, swashbuckling high adventure, and sweeping romance. It even has an uncredited appearance from Robin Williams. Ah, uh, I tell you that and all you can say is ah. Uh. Number 6. The Last Unicorn How important is film music to you? Do you remember a theme song long after its melodies have faded away? For many, the titular song in The Last Unicorn continues to echo years after this animated feature hit screens back in 1982. They will stare unbelieving at the last unicorn. The rock group America still performs the somewhat haunting ballad in concert. Beyond this, however, The Last Unicorn remains a treasure of early 80s animation. You may come with me if you like. Though I wish you'd asked for some other reward for having freed me. A lot of this is due to the director-producer team of Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bass. The adaptation of Peter S. Beagle's 1968 novel lives on today as an offbeat allegory of love, loss, and the passage of time. I remember you. I remember... Number 5. Stardust Director Matthew Vaughn may be better known for his high-octane action fare like Layer Cake, Kick-Ass, and the Kingsman franchise, but don't sleep on this fantasy tale from 2007. Well, that's... that sounds rather final. Stardust is a wonderful adventure with an impressive cast, including Charlie Cox, Claire Danes, Ricky Gervais, Sienna Miller, Peter O'Toole, Robert De Niro, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Ian McKellen. Do the stars gaze back? Ah, that's a question. Stardust feels like a love letter to the fantasy fairy tales of our youth, and is helmed with a steady hand that ensures this feeling never leaves the film. With its charming romance and humor, the movie is a shining example of an underrated fantasy film. I was right. Number 
Number 4. Bed Knobs and Broomsticks It's truly a shame that Bed Knobs and Broomsticks isn't as well remembered as its more famous Disney cousin, Mary Poppins. You're not suggesting that I should take these children into my house? Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's quite out of the question. Still, one of the wonderful things about film is how efforts such as these can be rediscovered by different generations, who continue to take in all of the magic at hand. Bedknobs and Broomsticks is the sort of whimsical fantasy that screams classic Disney and boasts a triumphant headline performance by Angela Lansbury. Bobbing along, singing a song, on the bottom of the beautiful briny sea. Animation collides with live action in that inimitable Disney way as Bedknobs and Broomsticks captures our hearts and leads us back to our childhoods. Number 3. Legend In Ridley Scott's brilliant 1985 fantasy film, There May Never Be Another Dawn, the tagline is quite telling because Scott's vision for legend is unapologetically dark in places. The film features Tim Curry as darkness, perhaps the best depiction of a devil ever committed to screen. We are all animals, my lady. Most are too afraid to see it. Legends doesn't stop there with the fantastical creatures either, since both the goblin Blix and the witchy Meg Mucklebones still haunt our dreams years later. Think we fair? Do you, Jack? Plus, Tangerine Dream's amazing electronic score combines with a soundtrack of pop hits from artists like Brian Ferry to create pure, unadulterated movie magic. We'd definitely count this one as legendary. Have faith in yourself. It is the greatest lesson you have learned. Number 2. The Black Cauldron Tragically, not every film is released at the proper time or receives the attention it deserves. The production of Disney's The Black Cauldron was notoriously troubled. The Black Cauldron? An awesome weapon, Tyron. It almost sunk the company's entire animation department for good. Thankfully, new generations of movie watchers have since reappraised the film, with its dark tone and gorgeous animation. Believe it or not, this thing was actually conceived to be darker than how it ended up, and we honestly might wish we lived in a universe where that was a thing. At least we can rest easy knowing that the Horned King remains one of the most harrowing Disney villains. Full stop. Our has arrived. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. The Dark Crystal the career of Jim Henson has been rightfully praised for all of the joy it brought to families. That said, it's also important to note that Henson's creations weren't always just for kids. What do you want of me? A shard. A crystal shard. Whether it was the adult jokes that populated the puppet spots on early episodes of Saturday Night Live, or this 1982 classic, Jim Henson's puppetry could achieve just about anything. The Dark Crystal in particular presents high fantasy with some legitimately terrifying villains in the form of the Skeksis, a group of evil, bird-like reptilians. Because of the prophecy, we must kill the Gelfling! It's not all bleak, however, since The Dark Crystal also showed audiences the beauty of Henson's imagination and the glory of fantasy filmmaking at an elite level. The prophecy didn't say anything about this! Which fantasy movie do you think deserves more attention? Let us know in the comments! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.